But there are a few points that I want to share to contextualize peace and security in an ethical framework. The first point I want to make is we are the first generation making ethical decisions that will determine whether we will be the last generation. This has never happened in human history. Some solutions can only be universal solutions. Why? Because a chlorofluorocarbon molecule from a refrigerant in Chile can take out the ozone over Rome. Why? Because if one country allows oceanic dumping, others will follow. Why? Because viruses do not recognize borders, religions, or races. Our futures are interconnected in unprecedented, unique ways. And wise people for millennium have been informing us of our deeper uni human unity. But now, for the first time in human history, that insight into human unity is not only a spiritual imperative, but it is a survival imperative. We must, if we are to survive, affirm the fact that we are one human family. Fear is the twin of ignorance, and it generates a false realism. Machiavelli and the Prince said, in terms of policies of state, where the safety of the country depends upon resolutions to be taken, no consideration of justice or injustice, humanity or cruelty, should be allowed to prevail. This policy of emergency can hardly make sense as a norm if we are to live as ethical beings in a human community. Overlooking the intricate interconnectedness of living systems, social Darwinism, another predominant ideology of today, says that strength is good, ultimate strength is better. This means of security becomes absurd in the nuclear age. Why? Because the ultimate pursuit of strength undermines the goal of security. We have improved means to an unimproved end. Nuclear weapons themselves, as a pursuit of security, breed insecurity. Where do we come, to come back to? Let's come back to our basic human values. They are easy to find. Every religious tradition has the same rule, and it is golden. Let me remind us of the basis of our ethical foundations. Buddhism, hurt not others in ways that you yourself would find hurtful. Christianity, all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do you even so to them. Hinduism, this is the sum of duty. Do not unto others which would cause you pain if done unto you. Islam, no one of you is a believer until he desires for the other that which he desires for himself. Jainism, a man should journey treating all creatures as he himself would be treated. Judaism, thou shalt love thy neighbor as yourself. Shinto, the heart of the person before you is your own mirror. Taoism, regard your neighbor's gain as your own gain and your neighbor's loss as your loss. Every single tradition of humanity has this rule. It's not a secret. We know what it is. But nations are not following that. So I would propose, in the modern age, two new rules. One rule is, treat other nations as you wish nations, your nation to be treated. And the second is the rule of the powerful. As one does, so shall others do. And now this concerns me gravely, because the powerful now are saying that they can violate this golden rule. The nuclear weapon states are saying, we will preserve the right in derogation of our duties under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty to negotiate the elimination of nuclear weapons. We want to be able to uniquely have the right to have nuclear weapons and not treat others with the same deference and deprive the rest of the world. 
First, it violates the golden rule and it is immoral. Second, it violates reason, it is unsustainable. And therefore, we must have a global, universal abolition of nuclear weapons. It is the grossest misuse of the gift of science and technology. We have developed excessively sophisticated technologies for destruction, but for our survival, we now need ethically appropriate social and human technologies for cooperation, for disarmament, and more basically for our very humanity. An Eskimo elder at the Millennium World Peace Summit at the United Nations said, and I quote, our history, the, um, the Eskimo history, goes back 40,000 years. And only now are we finding lakes in the Arctic ice cap. You have technology that is melting the ice. When will we develop a technology to melt the human heart? Let our deliberations today on peace and security also find ways that we can work together to melt that heart and make us more secure. Thank you.